Hello everyone, and welcome to a Doctor Who review with me, John Parker, and me, Jack Kerning, and me for the Christmas. I mean, what? We can't see yet, but I'm I'm guaranteed to see when I come to the editing. So uh, I'll have a right giggle when I come to look at that later on. So here we are, episode ten, the series finale of series eleven. <laughs> yes, I am sharing a, a a similar set of emotions. Episode ten, the Battle of Ranscor. Ranscor Avkolos. Avkolos. They said it like six, like, like a dozen times in the episode, and I still couldn't pronounce it. So this is Chris Chibnall's uh, last episode of the series. Um, of course, the series finale. The Doctor and friends respond to nine distress calls. Uh, um, um, originating from the same spot on the same planet. A planet that was originally looked after by a ancient race of beings called the Ux. It was Ux, not Orcs, right? Yes. The Ux. Uh, bit of a daft name, to be fair. But yes, these ancient beings, they, were the, they are the ones who could literally transform things around them with simply their mind, uh, literally transform the universe, I think the Doctor mentioned. Reality benders. Yeah, reality benders. You know, the, the universe was literally at their fingertips. So they were an incredibly advanced species f- physically. Um, they were f- physically advanced, of course, in their minds. I kind of gathered that they weren't so much advanced, especially when it came to walking in the TARDIS, except... The reference from um, the one dude, the one, uh, the dudox. He actually, and it's the first time he actually got the dimensional in transcendental um, reference. Delph said, yeah, uh, he said it was, uh, yeah, dimensional yeah. transcendental. Yeah, that that's. It's been a while since we've had that reference in Doctor Who, hasn't it? I think the last person who picked up on it was Rory. Yes, yes, it was. It was Rory, the last person to pick up on that. Um, see, because he doesn't five. freak out, and then he goes, "Oh, well, it's just." Yeah, well, I read about this. It's just trans- transcendental. He goes, "Oh, that's no fun." Yeah, he researched the whole lot. So, um, so yes, they land on the planet, and it is literally a battlefield. Just a complete battlefield, loads dead. Um, they find this mysterious commander who had lost his memory because of the incredible input from this seemingly alive planet. I suppose we assume the planet was alive in some way, because obviously it's. I think because of what the Ux did, they forged it that way. I guess. Don't know. Well, you could say that the reason why the planet was like that was because of a familiar face that showed up in the episode. Yes, the, uh, I was going to say the, the bounty hunter that we saw in the first episode of Series 11 returned, Tim Shaw, mm-hmm. um, who actually arrived on the planet straight after the Doctor and her friends uh, condemned him in the first episode. He arrived on the planet literally batten, battered and bruised, uh, literally on the verge of death, um, but obviously he was quite lucky to find these two beings and because of his arrival and their very strong belief system, he became a god to the Ux and used them to literally build a weapon. Their sanctuary, which they thought was going to be a a peaceful place, was actually going to be a weapon for Timshaw to use to wreak his revenge. Revenge on the Doctor. Um... Mm -hmm mainly by using the energy from other planets that he zapped out of space and time, uh, well, space, I don't know about time, um, to then cause the Doctor some pain. And of course, as we all know, the Doctor managed to defeat Tim Shaw. And again. Again. Well, I say that he, she defeated him. Um, Graham and Ryan just condemned him to life in a stasis chamber, mm-hmm. which is a, an interesting way to go for a villain like that. But, anyhow, I doubt that will be the last time we see him if they continue to follow on that story, which I doubt. So, looking back on the story, I have to admit, it was a pretty decent, it, it was a decent ending. I'm, I'm happy for it, but also angry at the same time. I'm happy because it was something that we had a, 
It was much better than what we've had in this series so far. But that's why I'm also angry, because of all the rubbish episodes we've had. We've had at least, okay, fair enough, we've had about two or three decent episodes, maybe four, but the rest has just been diabolical. But this one has more or less re redeemed my, um, redeemed itself and has restored a little bit of faith in Fun. the show for me. Funnily enough, while I was watching this episode, I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm probably going to hit a load of issues with the, the way it's being told. Yeah. Um, having execution issues again, but um, I thought I did get a lot of vibes from the first episode in this one, and I actually quite enjoyed it because of that. True. I mean, the, I suppose the vibe. Um, the, I mean, the one vibe I got in particular was Graham's deep, raw, angry emotion uh, when he find, when he found out that Tim Shaw was actually mm -hmm. on the planet. Because obviously, he really wanted to kill him because of what happened to Grace and it's just the deep the, the deepness in his eyes he, you know he really wanted to commit that well he actually, he really wanted he actually to do it. looked a little bit psychotic at the start because of how he was saying it to the doctor so flatlined yeah you know and, and it, it didn't seem to show much emotion apart from I mean, pure he, desire to kill exactly he knew the doctor well enough now he, he knows what she's like but Graham was like sorry doc I'm going to cut all that crap out because I need to do this. This is what I want to do. It's happening. Of course, you know, after going through the episode and obviously spending time with Ryan and just talking and bonding even more a little bit, of course, Graham actually decided to become the better person and not to kill Tim Shaw, which I thought was pretty. It was a pretty good uh, way to end or kind of um, get closure on that, I suppose you could say. So yeah. I, I, I thought that was that was all right. But I mean, the start of the episode, you know, we've got this mysterious start, this, this tense atmosphere. We've got these two amazing beings and then this mysterious figure. The start of the episode, the execution at the beginning, I thought was pretty good. So interesting fact, when this episode first started... And you see that vast landscape. The very first thing I shouted, as soon as I saw it, Quarry! First time we saw a quarry of this series. <laughs> what? Meanwhile in Wales. This is the first time we see a, a Welsh quarry being used. Oh, this. right. Got you. <laughs> I, thought you said, I thought you said koi then. I was going to say koi. Quarry. Oh, oh right, like, quarry. quarry. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, no, I mean... But I'm still annoyed at the fact that of all the terrible episodes we've had, you know, so far, he then just drops this one. I'm sorry, but that's you see that now here's right. an interesting, well, interesting fact. If you look at Wikipedia. This episode and the first episode were filmed in the same block, which actually makes it a little bit confusing because they filmed the first episode first, then they filmed the last episode straight after it. Now, the last episode, as we've seen, already has TARDIS scenes in it. And that means that the actors would have had to act as if they'd already seen the TARDIS before they filmed the scene where they first see the TARDIS, which is a little bit backwards, but it's kind of fun to think about. But it also explains why these first two episodes... Well, sorry, no. Why the first and the last episode are of similar quality and probably why I enjoyed it is because... These two episodes were effectively the same story, just continued. And it also implies that Chris True. Chibnall's thick writing was in these two episodes. And it actually wasn't bad. It was a good storyline. It was the other episodes that faltered, which kind of gave the, gives the impression that he uh, ran out of ideas as he was filming the other Block's episodes. Well, interesting you saying that, actually. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the way... Well, you saying that, the way I feel about it is that... Other writers came to him saying, Chris, 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 Ego, I've got this idea. And Chris is just there going, uh, yeah, 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 w whatever, yeah, 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 no, 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 that's fine. You know, still writing his his blocks, his two episodes, or his mm. episodes anyway. And everyone's coming, Chris, what about this one? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, that's fine, yeah, go ahead, yeah. yeah. Well, they were right, in the writer's one. room style, wasn't it? It was a hybrid style for this writing. So they, w they would have been in a room together, they would have discussed their ideas between them to make sure it all fits in with the series. I mean, now, of course, with having no story arc, that means if yeah. these episodes are supposed to be written standalone, then the only arc that we had was the woman who fell to Earth, 
uh, the Battle of Ravskar after Kolos, Ravskar and Kolos, whatever, and um, the Ghost Monument. Those are the three mm. episodes that have the story arc in them. Yes, because the, st- the, the Stenanto reference followed on into the Ghost Monument, didn't it? Yeah, so those three episodes are the main, I think, quote-unquote story arc, even though there wasn't really a story arc, there was just a continuation of an idea. But, yeah. So. I mean, me saying that Chris will just kind of fob the rest of them off, I mean, that, that's just... A little well, feeling of of mine. I mean, whether it's true or not, we'll never know. I mean, I pretty much doubt it to be honest, because that is certainly not how you do it professionally. But again, we'll never know. So that that's just that's just my speculation, my feeling from this. So uh, I don't know if that is the case, which I very much doubt. But you never know. It's a bit of a dick move. Well, how it looks to me is he's bookended the series. Mm-hmm. Episode one was very good. This last episode was tolerable. And then everything else in between has basically been a fucking car crash. Well, then again, the Kablam episode was one of the best. And Rosa was a pretty good... um, Rosa was all right. See, the two historical ones we've had were good. I liked Rosa and the the Indian one. Demons of the Punjab. I changed my mind about hating because actually... Yeah, because the next episode uh, kind of... Made you and, go back on that one, I think. I mean, literally, right? I would rather a season where the first episode we have the first, the third, whatever demons was, yeah, and this last one, because that's quality television. Yeah, everything else was like filler. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. You're absolutely yeah. well. That, that's exactly why I feel you're absolutely like, right with that. Not good filler either. I right? think. Yeah. I think. No. I think in a way, what should, what they should do is they should put a lot more time in the writing part, the pre-production part, than the production part. Um. Obviously, with these new visual effects, they do really want to focus on also trying to get those visual effects right, uh, to keep the production quality high. We don't want to have. It, we don't want to have a good story and have it really lackluster. But we don't want to have a really good visual and have a really bad story. We want a good balance. So they do need to put a lot more time into pre-production, as well as keeping a good amount of time in production. Which yeah. is why I suppose. I mean, for series twelve, I'm a little excited about it. But well, only because I, I think that this will give them a chance to do a story arc at last. Well, one thing I will okay. say, John, um, we'll, we'll save that for our series uh, over, overall review, because that is one thing we definitely need to do, and mm. we'll have so much to talk about in that. Um, we're doing that Christmas Day, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we'll get a video done for Christmas Day, so we've, all, we've got something to put out for uh, Christmas morning or Christmas afternoon, so uh, it'd be quite nice that will. But no, I mean this episode in general, it was it it was decent, it w- it was pretty good. But I mean, if you do the math with the whole series, it it, it you know, it doesn't mm. do series eleven. It doesn't. This episode does not do series eleven justice. No, no, not really. We've had four good episodes. I tell you, no, I'll tell you what, ones. I'll yeah. tell you what would have been a good idea. I mean, what they should have done is they should have put episode one and this episode right after each other and made it a part two-parter. Because then it would have kept it going for those mm. two. Yeah. But then then you couldn't really shoehorn in the whole underlying storyline that Graham is still pissed off. Yeah. And you wouldn't have True. the character development between Graham and the Doctor for, for them to have that. True. And, and Ryan. And the TARDIS. They, they, they needed this... They needed that gap to to build like that. That. Yeah, true. The thing is, though, they stretched that out way too much. I think. Yeah, it was a little bit. Overdone. So I have to admit, Mark Addy. I like Mark Addy as an actor. Yeah, he did well I, with that. I I liked him in this. I th- I thought it was pretty good. I I did like him in this, as as the commander, wasn't he? He was the commander. So it was pretty nice to see Mark Addy in Doctor Who. So, um, overall, guys, shall we give our verdicts? Is there much else? Do you want to talk about the episode in general? I'll say my main points in the verdict. Yeah, okay. Um, Cody, anything else you want to add? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so, verdict time. John, out of ten, what would you give? Um, so, 
Uh, there's a lot of good points about this episode, and one of the reasons why we enjoyed it is because it had f- similar feelings from the women, woman who fell to earth. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoyed the TARDIS scene at the end, uh, apart from the fact that they yeah. had continual sparks coming out the console. That looked a little bit cheap, but everything else, very good. I like the, the lantern flickering and then using it as a beam. That was good. Um, I like that. Sticking her face near the uh, beam was a, not a very good idea. Um, <laughs> yeah, a bit dumb, I think. really dumb. But, uh, <laughs> But but we'll just forgive that. Um, users, sorry, not users. Um, viewers should be aware that um, there is obviously a few plot conveniences that story writers do like to put into stories. So um, we have to kind of you know waver those away. You know, like um, why did she stick a face next to the beam? Technically, that should have burnt her face off. But you know, yeah. but uh, you know, she was just trying to get all you know. Oh, yeah. Look, but yeah. anyway. <laughs> um, very well written story, actually. It was fleshed out quite well. It wasn't too detailed on the characters, but we did get enough information from them to make them interesting. The Ux character, very nice with that whole ability to reality. I, lo- I love reality bending powers. It's always been a-, a fascination of mine in any type of sci fi film yeah. or TV show. The universe at your fingertips. Exactly. And seeing that, I thought it was very good, except the visual graphics on those rocks at the start were a little bit lacking. The lighting was off on them, so it did look a bit fake, but mm. eh, it was still still a really good episode. So all in all, yep. I will say that this episode was better than a few that I'd seen, and because of the fact that it was in the first quality, I'm going to give it a nice solid 8 out of 10. I know that might be a little bit generous, but I do think fair it enough. was better than what we had seen. So. No, that is fair enough. And uh, Cody... Go ahead. This is going to be interesting, so what are you going to give? Uh, to be honest, um, <coughs> there's actually a point I thought of that we didn't bring up. I liked the utilisation of the TARDIS as just a whole. It's yes. Mm. I yeah. would I'm agree on that. I'm so glad that she didn't just fucking wave that Sonic screwdriver silver everywhere. space turd back. <laughs> if only just to some of the damn thing. <laughs> for the hundredth time. To be honest, I quite liked how she managed that. That was... Yeah. Is nicely of written, wasn't a completely ridiculous overuse of the Sonic screwdriver yeah. for once. Totally agree. So no, you know, I do like how they utilise the TARDIS for that for once, instead of just relying on everyone's favourite multi-tool that gets you out of anything. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. She used it to flip and stick the grenades to the thing, didn't she? Yeah, those that pla- was... Those plastic... I, I leave her to it. She do what she want. I don't <laughs> care. Uh, I just like TARDIS, okay? <laughs> uh, this is what this reduces us to. Although, uh, uh, actually, no, you, you continue your vote. There's one thing that just came into my mind. But you, you, you continue. I'll no, what, what is it? I, you saying that about sticking the grenades onto the thing... It's just something from like the recent series with David Tennant. Um, we always got the impre- impression that there was particularly only one species that could have the power to take planets out of their space. That being the Daleks. Daleks. Mm-hmm. Now, and they the, did that with great difficulty. Yeah, and then the Stenza. No, no, the Stenza didn't do it, remember? He got the Ux to do it using their reality mending powers, which technically they can do. But with Stenza tech as well. Yeah, to help kind of boost it. I remember Stan's tech was quite advanced as well. The Doctor was having trouble deciphering it. True, true. Sorry, mm. that that just came into my mind all of a sudden. I don't that know why. That is a good point. I will say that the Stan's are give the impression that they're on par. Or not not, not on par, but just under par with the uh, Dalek tech. You know, I mean, it, they seem to be giving the impression that this is a really big, strong, advanced race. We might mm. see them again in future series. Maybe. Hmm. Carry on, Cody. This is the only <laughs> yeah, interesting sorry. thing about this series, to be honest. Yeah. Um, see, I made the point about the TARDIS being nice. <laughs> yeah. I think that was... Yeah, that's, that's where you, that's no, where you to got honest, to. This episode was... I'm going to say redeeming. Not redeeming of the entire series, mm-hmm. but redeeming of the crock of shit we had <laughs> the past three weeks. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually giving this week a six. Mm, okay, okay. We are upgrading. <laughs> We're moving up in the world. A small <laughs> Small, a small, small move. Um, so yes, no, no, no. The, all points have been made so far, you know, I totally agree, agree with. And I do think that this episode has restored a bit of faith 
in me for future episodes and for the New Year special. Yeah, I'm really excited for the the, the New Year special because they they've they've bumped it up in the trailer at the end of the episode. They did a really quick trailer, then they did the weird executive producers sign, yeah. and then straight after that they did this trailer. And it looks really good. And she didn't say what the name of the creature was. No, kept us on the I'm deli interested. I'm interested. I really want to know what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so yeah, no, no, all good for the episode. So for me, I, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it an eight. I think. Like, yeah, I'm gonna give it an eight. An eight out of ten. So, yeah. an eight out of ten. So, folks, that is it for the se- for our Series 11 reviews. Of course, we are going to be doing the Series 11 overall review. Uh, we'll aim, I'm going to aim to uh, release that for Christmas Day. So, mm-hmm. Christmas morning, Christmas afternoon, we've all got something to watch because obviously... You now... can sit down with your Christmas dinner <laughs> your and Christmas your lovely, dinner, your your lovely new jumper that your nan's given you. And you can look at us idiots discuss bollocks. And your yes. lump of coal... <laughs> That's a bit oh, harsh, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't always get a lot of cold, though I did get it once as a joke. Oh, well, harsh. <laughs> but yes, obviously, because Doctor Who is now no longer on Christmas Day for whatever bloody reason that is. So, um, so yes, we'll be doing our series review, and of course, we will be back for the New Year's Day special review. Uh, we will then get, a, hopefully, the new series overall. Chris Gibble in general will redeem himself properly. Well, and we can you get know, excited so, for something for once. Well, they've got this New Year's special, and then we've got to wait an entire year for the next series. Yeah, 2020? True. I've just, just remembered that, yeah. Yeah, I know. no, I read that while, while you were... I mean, it. I hope that they take that time to really finalise it. They better. We'll, they we'll better. see. Better. Because <laughs> they're on tender hooks now. If Series 12 flops... God, there's going to be a, a war. It's going to be World War Four. Yeah. So, anyway. Anyway. Until then, folks, take care, see you soon, and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye, guys. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, folks, for watching. If you enjoyed, do please leave a like or comment below on this video. If you want more, on Jack's side is the last video and the recommended video that we've suggested to you. To stay tuned for more, on John's right is the link to our channel so you can subscribe. And also we have a link to our website if you want more information about who we are and what we do. Until next time, take care, stay safe. And remember, let your kids out. Bye bye guys.